Missionary 2023. Live on Facebook at Bishop Gideon TT Fair. Every Thursday at 1900 GMT. Bishop Gideon Titi Ofei, the man who builds leaders. Hi, my name is Bishop Gideon Yofi Titi Ofei. I'm your leadership engineer. Bishop Gideon Titi Ofei believes that Africa's problem is a leadership problem. For this reason, he has been committed to raising the next generation of leaders who can create jobs, increase income, and reduce poverty through his leadership training programs, mainly targeted at leaders under 40. I make a special mention of my brother and friend, Bishop Gideon Titiofe. You deserve congratulations. <laughs> For the contribution you have made not only to our educational space, but to the development of leaders through the various programs and sessions you continue to develop. When one takes a chronological and a panoramic view and Bishop Gideon Titi of his life journey, you will discover one thing, a man on a journey, a journey to build and discover leaders. I believe that when we are counting or taking stock of the resources of the continent of Africa, we should include Bishop Gideon Titi of her on top of that list because he is, and indeed, a very vital human resource for us. My name is Peter Adeto. I'm a team lead for the African Startups and SMEs in Export and Trade Secretariat. I'm also an AFCFTA SME and Trade Advisor, as well as a Development Consultant. And I owe all this to Bishop Gideon Titiofe. My name is Charlotte Osei, and it's been my privilege to share a few platforms with Bishop Gideon Titiofe. It is not an accident that in the past five years, Bishop Gideon Tichove has consistently been on the list of the 100 most influential Ghanaians. He's also noted as one of the top 50 most influential Christian leaders in Ghana. Bishop's work in raising leaders, empowering the next generation of entrepreneurs, ensuring that people have a renewed mindset to take on the challenges of the day, stretches from the pulpit to his work at the Accra Business School, and also to all the many leadership conferences and programs that he hosts. His knowledge, his skill, his passion for the next generation is clear for all to see. Hello, folks. I'm here to talk to you about my husband for 30 years, Bishop Yofititi Ofe. What I've noticed about him for the past 30 years is his servant leadership ability and also his ability to discover, develop, and deploy young leaders. He amazes me when it comes to his service to humanity. He's down to earth. Everyone is his friend. In Ghana, leadership is not just a position. It's a calling. And for Bishop Gideon Titiofe, that calling has led him to build leaders for over three decades. There are three levels that um, you can grow yourself as a leader and grow the people around you as a leader and grow your organization as a leader. Fortunately, I have been at all these three levels. The first level is the leadership learner. And then the second level is the leadership practitioner. And the third level is the leadership educator. Most people who become leadership, very good leadership practitioners, begin as leadership students and learn. I started learning leadership at a very early age. My father was the first leader that I truly observed. I learned by observation. My father had compassion had competence, we were a large family, we were going through very difficult moments, and my father would not abandon the ship, but would steer the affairs of the family 
and observing this man's capacity to provide and to lead at a very advanced age of his life was for me very motivating for me. He always knew where we were going and how he was going to get everyone going in that direction. And his, his ability to, to know all of us, our uniqueness, and how he deals with every one of us based on our very unique characteristics was for me the first les lesson in, in leadership for me. As a 22-year-old born-again Christian, he was made a youth pastor at the World Bible Missionary Church. Since then, he's been committed to building young people in the church to Christ-like maturity. Because the price to be at the mountaintop, only few people are willing to pay. I have known Bishop Gideon Tichy of uh, since his, his early 20s, when he joined the World Bible Missionary Church, fresh out of Bible school. When he joined, he was given the position of a youth pastor. But as a result of his youthful exuberance, he got into the hair of uh, many of the old men because they thought he was too radical. But I found it rather refreshing. And then along the line, there was added to his portfolio the position of a branch pastor. We had a branch at Teshi, Abuchianya, they call that place. And it was housed in a video center. He was a branch pastor then. You could see traces of his leadership while he was there. Church was growing in bounds. He had lots of youthful people there. And it was a very exciting place to be. And interestingly, even though it was a branch, he was rather organizing uh, programs and inviting the headquarters. Often he will, he will organize Easter programs and we will come from the headquarters to his small branch and he will host us. As I said, because of his youthfulness, uh, a lot of the conservative old men found him troublesome. I remember at a point he named his branch the Liberty Chapel. And the people got the wrong idea that he was trying to break away, but he was just expressing himself. I believe he was the first person to have named a church branch. It was a nobility, and now everybody is doing it. At the time he did it, he was totally misunderstood. But that's how creative he is, and he has a, a lot more in him. I believe we'll see a lot more in the uh, near future. My relationship with Bishop Titiofer dates back to the early 90s when he was my youth pastor, then at the World Bible Missionary Church. I was a young teenager coming up on fire for the Lord, and his leadership qualities had a lasting impact on my life. I remember those days when he used to take us on retreats, then to places like the University of Ghana, who we'll leave and go on a Friday night, return on Sunday with all the fire to church, and he helped to keep us really revived and on fire for the Lord. Beyond that, he was my SU leader, even at Aquinas Secondary School also. And I remember the tenure of his leadership, preaching at assembly and stuff like that. He really left a lasting impact on me. Today, I stand here as an ordained minister of God at the Pleasant Place Church, still under the leadership of Bishop Titi Ofer. He still continues to impact my life in great ways. My name is Pastor Ebenezer Kabu. Pleasant Place Church. When I met him, he was a youth pastor in his church, and he noticed that the church was more of adults than youth. They were having just few youth in the church. He took upon himself to go from schools to school, secondary schools, I mean, to preach the gospel at their Wednesday worship services led people to Christ and directed them to his church. And very soon, the youth population in the church was growing. So then his senior pastor said, let me give the youth to you to handle. And he did this so effectively. And then immediately we got married. By then he was only 24 years. We were given a branch to pastor. So he became a head pastor of a branch. And it was so amazing how this 24-year-old guy 
was managing a whole branch that was involved with adults who were even more older, far, far, far older than himself. And how he was able to discover the young people and help them to deploy the potentials in them. It didn't end there. Two years down the line, though we started with only 11 people with the church, by the second year, we were sitting 60 people. It wasn't long he came to tell me that he's found another opportunity to teach in a Bible school. I looked at him and I was like, can you add this to your already tedious assignment? He said, why not? That is my calling. I want to teach. And very soon, this 26-year-old man was a principal of a Bible school under, under tree. <laughs> that Bible school was actually meeting under tree. So I used to make mockery of him that you were a principal of a Bible school under a tree. But he was enjoying it. When I was 14 years old, I became born again and joined a fellowship, the Transcontinental Evangelistic Association. And we were led by other young people in their early 20s. And I watched these people provide leadership at that age. And for me, outside my home, that was the first time I was learning leadership, the ability to motivate, the ability to, to move us on into a certain direction. I observed their leadership character, their leadership charisma, their leadership competence, their leadership care, their leadership compassion. At that age of 14, I was focused on that. And by 16, I had become a leadership practitioner. I was leading scripture unions, leading home cells, leading community for Christ, I was a community for Christ organizer, a leading morning devotions at that, at that system, I had a 50-member morning devotion group and I would get up sometimes at 2 a.m. go and do my prayers so that the recommended is back and around around 4 a.m. I would now go from house to house to call my members to meet me on the back to, to pray. So around that time, I had already become a leadership practitioner based on what I've learned from our leaders in Transia and from my father. In his quest to extend his influence beyond the four walls of the church, Bishop Titiofe in 2004 set up AfriLead. We started AfriLead in 2004 and I was shocked. Bishop would go around, gather people, young pastors. It started from pastors. We didn't start it corporately. It started from pastors. He would go around, gather young pastors, teach them management, church management, and things like that. You know, it's so amazing. And now we run the Accra Business School. Affiliate proceeded to become Pan-Africa Center for Leadership. And then we went into Graduate School of Governance and Leadership. And now it has land landed us into Accra Business School. And most of the people who came to work with us came with no degrees. Some of them were having just WASI certificates. But Bishop would discover them so young, energize them, influence them to go back to school and help them, give them scholarships for them to go back to school. And today, we have most of them managing positions in the office. They have their first degrees. Some are having their MBAs and they are managing managerial positions in this office. My name is Loya Gloria Oporibuedu. I have known Bishop Titiofe for 20 years. My first time was in 2003 when I saw his advert in the paper advertising women in leadership training at the Snake Guest House. So I attended and what inspired me was that when I told him I just let FIDA and I was contemplating on working for myself. 
He said, yes, you can do that and you can form as many corporate bodies as possible. And that inspired me that this is a visionary who thinks outside the box. He's not limited or restrained in a one-way direction. And that made me so impressed that I kept up with AfriLead, the organization that he had set up to inspire and build leadership, the African Center for Leadership and Human Resource Development. And for a while, I worked with AfriLead as a trainer for their short-term courses. And then he formed the Graduate School of Governance and Leadership, and I was also one of the lecturers. Then he formed the Accra Business School, and I've been a member of the Board of Governors. And I would say that he inspires me, not only academically, not only in respect of building and bringing up servant leaders for Africa and the globe, but I also see him as a very good Christian spiritual development leader. He's well versed in the Bible, and he told me that he spends a day every week to fast, pray, and wait on the Lord. He's a great leader, an all-round leader. My name is Nesta Pia. I'm an adjunct lecturer at Accra Business School. I've known Bishop since 2004 when he started the African Center for Leadership and Human Resource Development. And this evolved into the Graduate School of Governance and Leadership and ultimately to Accra Business School. My observation about Bishop's uh, leadership is that he's somebody who has a vision. And it is through this vision that he was able to grow this institution from the earlier uh, African Center for Leadership uh, Development to the Accra Business School. He's been able to impact his vision into the leaders that he has trained for them to dream big and create things into the future. Throughout this period, I discovered that I was not just interested in leading for others to follow. I was more interested in group leadership. I felt that I must grow all the people around me to also become leaders. So I committed myself to, to growing young people around me to also becoming leaders, to do the things I was doing. Eventually, I had to move on to become a, a leadership educator. And this was when I now started setting up uh, leadership institutions from the African Center for Leadership and Human Resource Development through to the Pan-African Institute for Leadership and Governance Studies, through to the African Management and Productivity Institute, to setting up the International Organization for Capacity Building, to setting up the Boardroom Institute, and to set up the almighty Graduate School of Governance and Leadership, which today is Accra Business School. So to now have to institutionalize my desire not to only grow as a leader through leadership learning or through leadership practice, but also to grow leaders around me, to grow leaders that people are coming in contact with, to help people to discover their leadership potential, help them to develop it, and help them to deploy it. I had to institutionalize that vision, I had to institutionalize that um, direction. So we created various institutions that have today become the Accra Business School, where Hundreds, hundreds are trained every year and developed and deployed. There is no institutions, either public or private or church, that you will not find someone who has been influenced by my leadership philosophy, my leadership thinking, my leadership charisma, character, and competence. Because for me, I am totally committed to building. I call myself the leadership mechanic and um, who is quite interested in helping um, build the leadership competence of especially young people. Bishop Titiofe led his team to establish Graduate School of Governance and Leadership to GSGL in 2010. And that was a game changer in leadership growth and development in Ghana as very busy business executives, political leaders and industry players had the opportunity to upgrade their skills during the weekend without affecting their regular work schedule in the week. I've known Bishop Titi of uh, over 15 years. 
And I've known him as a person who creates future leaders. And that, for me, is fantastic. I have chaired his governing board of his school when he started leadership and governance graduate school. And wherever I go, what I hear from people is so great. That here is a man who has some kind of a natural talent to develop leaders. Bishop Tito Fair bring an equity lens to the process of developing leaders. And in fact, he makes sure that he can invest in future leaders. And that is all that he has been doing. Future leaders in organizations, future leaders in the church, future leaders in politics. I mean, all around. For me, he has been able to strengthen a lot of executive team at the workplace. Because most of the programs are so targeted at various organizations, making sure that you can develop an organization. He has been able to engage the board by way of corporate governance process. And these are some of the programs that he has run. And I feel that that is very commendable. And then when it comes to searching for talent, this is where uh, uh, Bishop Tito uh, is able to blend a lot of skills, knowledge, and experience in a balanced, all-round approach to make sure that he's able to develop talents. And so I find him as a very great leader who is able to actually get people develop. Bishop Tito Fair, for me, is a natural leader. This is where he's able to outshine in any competition. And you can see how Accra Business School is growing. It is truly a par excellent leadership skill that he exhibits. And in making sure that we have good leaders for this country, uh, he has contributed a lot if you see a number of graduates that have come for his executive uh, uh, programs, it cuts across. And so I want to say that Bishop Tito Fair, leadership skills is on parallel. My name is Ambassador Major General Francis Edua Manfu. I'm currently the Special Advisor to the President of the Republic of Ghana. I first met Bishop, then Pastor Tito Ofe, some 12 years ago, I've seen the exploits of Bishop Titi Ofe. I've seen that he's a transformational leader. I've seen that he is a strong religious leader. I see him as a very, very principled uh, leader, very meticulous, who doesn't take anything for granted. I see him as a, a trailblazer, you know, establishing so many uh, entities, institutions. And above all, I've seen him as an achiever, a role model for the newer generation. Hello, my name is Ayuki Utu, former Attorney General and Minister of Justice and the immediate past Ghana's High Commissioner to Canada. I'm happy to be part of this program. I must say that uh, when I became an Attorney General, I was like whisked from private practice straight into politics. I wasn't then a politician, and so I had to do, learn on the job. Now, sometime around 2010, I started seeing adverts in the newspapers about a graduate school of governance and leadership. In my area, I live on a splinters route, and I noticed that the school was not located far away from my area. I looked at the syllabus, and I realized that uh, for a politician, one needs to have some knowledge about uh, governance and leadership. Although, as lawyers, we've done some constitutional law and politics, which should give us or political science, which will give us a, a good background. But I thought I needed something, you know, more practical and a theoretical base. I also noticed that the course was very flexible. I was very uh, then uh, in top practice, and I had no time at all. But I realized that the timetable was like a weekend program, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And that's it. The following week, you can have the week to do whatever you want to do. So if anything at all, you lost only one Friday. And so I enrolled and took part in the lectures. What I noticed was that he had lecturers from the universities and 
very good guys, and uh, including Professor Adai was teaching leadership. Then I think he was the rector at uh, Gimpa. I remember Titio Fair also surprised us on one of the days when he came in to uh, teach leadership, uh, practical aspects of leadership. And I think he has a book on it, on leadership. And I think he had points that he wanted us to uh, commit into memory about what supposed, a leader is supposed uh, to do. And then we were invited to come back again for what he called an advanced course, or boardroom institute. Where, where, and so sometimes I write fellow of the boardroom institute, FBI, and people ask me what it stands for. And I said they, they shouldn't worry, it can stand for anything. <laughs> uh, the role, I must say that he has been very keen on leadership. Uh, I must say that he's done well in trying to uh, build leadership because if you look at the, the, the caliber of people that uh, we had, it included, like myself, past uh, ministers of state, we had uh, uh, seven uh, DCEs and MCEs, some were passed, so we did some work on local government as well, and uh, we, we, we became great friends. All his life, he loves it when it comes to educating, uh, helping people to discover their potentials, and to help their generation. Bishop Titi Afe believes true leaders drive innovation, lead change, and solve problems. Based on this belief, he led the re-engineering of GSGL into the celebrated Accra Business School. It gives me great honor to be delivering the keynote address at the 11th Congregation of Accra Business School. And I extend to you the warm compliment of the Minister for Education, Dr. Yaoose Edichum. I must commend highly and salute the foresight and vision of the founders of Accra Business School, Bishop Gideon and Lady Olivia Titi Ofe, for the vision of founding an institution that embodies godly and Christian principles that has gained grounds and reputation not only in Ghana, but Africa as a center of excellence that over the years has raised men and women of notable repute who continue to serve this country in many distinguished ways. We continue to salute your efforts and the efforts of your faculty members for the consistency that you have attached to your core mission of raising leaders to global standards to be able to create jobs, increase incomes, and to be able to reduce poverty. I would like to say that um, Accra Business School actually did have a um, great impact uh, on my training as a public health uh, official. The one-year program was quite impactful. I can say for sure that most of my knowledge in corporate governance, uh, understanding or appreciation of financial statements, as well as the language in the business world, were all picked up from the Accra Business School. And I do not in any way uh, regret my decision to veer off the sciences and do some work uh, in administration and for that matter business. I found their modules very inspiring. The teaching um, methods were very practical where you have discussions on um, and various topics. You have real life examples in the corporate world and you have this um, uh, communal uh, approach in terms of the class in trying to solve a problem. It's a very practical and by the time you are done with the course, you might have written a book but it's worth the studies. And some of us are really appreciative of uh, their efforts to impact knowledge on us. Um, today we are applying some of that knowledge to the national course and um, Ghana is the beneficiary. Bishop Titi Afe's contribution to alleviating Africa's leadership problem is by creating African Young Leaders Fellowship Program, AYLFP, which has attracted over 300 young African leaders from across the continent. I created the African Young Leaders Fellowship Program with three pathways. The governance pathways, the governance and leadership pathways, the entrepreneurship pathway, and the Christian leadership pathway. This is a one-year mentorship program, which begins with a 10-day residential event, 10-day residential training, and then one-year mentoring 
listing. Okay? So different, different platforms have been created which basically support bills and helps me grow um, um, leaders. So I'm totally committed to building the next generation of leaders. And I believe that the next great leader is currently under construction under me. I encountered Bishop Titi of uh, in 2016 as an aspiring young leader who wanted to contest for SRC president of Data Link Institute. I became the SRC president weeks after Bishop anointed me as the King's anointer for that position. Uh, fast forward, I joined the African Young Leadership Fellowship Program, where together with 300 young people across the continent were hosted by Bishop at the Accra Business School. It was a fully funded program, free, feeding, everything, accommodation was sorted out by the leader, Bishop Titi Ofer. I'm happy to say that after training in leadership development, entrepreneurship development, corporate governance, and what have you, I am proud to say that I took on the pathway of entrepreneurship, I later on served on many platforms, including the UNDP, including other UN agencies, and uh, serving across the CSO landscape in Ghana as a champion for sustainable development goals. I later on traveled to China, served on several uh, platforms, innovation programs, and what have you. Today, I work with Bridge for Change Ghana as a program and communications officer. It's an international nonprofit helping social entrepreneurs across Ghana to unleash the power of young people and, and help solve women challenges. I'm happy to call myself a mentee of Bishop Titi Fair. Indeed, he identifies potential, manages potential, trains leaders, probably wins leaders from the world to the church and then deploys leaders from the church to the world. I'm happy to call myself a student of Bishop Titi Fair. Thank you. Every year, I house 100 under 30 people who have established interest in ministry and we pay them stipends every weekend and build them for one year and we send them back to their churches. As a spiritual leader committed to raising the next generation of spiritual leaders, Bishop Titi Ofe created Joshua Leadership Residency Program, JLRP, to educate, encourage, empower, and equip young people under 30 years with an established interest to serve the Lord with a wholehearted devotion. Salut, moi c'est Atelbi Mbayam depuis le Tchad. C'est un privilège de témoigner par rapport à l'influence positive des enseignements de mon père spirituel, Bishop Gideon Titiofe. J'ai eu la chance de rencontrer Bishop il y a de cela cinq ans pendant le programme résidentiel du leadership Josué au Ghana. Bishop a été un modèle incroyable pour moi. Sa sagesse, son amour inconditionnel m'ont aidé à comprendre la puissance de la foi et surtout de la prière. Bishop aujourd'hui m'a aussi enseigné à voir les défis de la vie comme des opportunités de croissance. Aujourd'hui, grâce à ses enseignements, je dirais que J'ai utilisé cela pour aussi influencer ma communauté chrétienne, que ce soit musulmane au Ghana. Oui, Bishop, vous êtes un modèle pour moi. Vous avez joué un rôle important dans ma vie. Et que le Seigneur vous bénisse pour ce que vous ne cessez de faire pour nous les jeunes, surtout sur le plan international. Merci et soyez bénis en Jésus. My name is Eli Costan Boche. I started following Bishop Gideon Titi Ofer uh, on CTFM, listening to his broadcast Sunday morning. I moved closer to attend some of his program, Momentum. I came for I+. Plus. I joined 30 things every pastor must know in 10 days. I believe God has prepared him to raise leaders in this particular generation. I joined the Joshua Leadership Presidency Program finally in 2018, where I served as the first president of the school. I finished and then Bishop asked that I stay on and serve under him under the apprenticeship program. Through that, I stayed on and after a while, I now got married here at the Pleasant Place Church 
and currently I'm serving as the pastor in charge of missions, outreach, and then evangelism. And now I head the church planting, evangelism, and outreach department of the church. Bishop Titi offers impact on my personal life has been amazing. Her contribution to my life, this direction to my life has been amazing. In 2000, Bishop Titiofe established the Pleasant Place Church to create a 21st century church with a 1st century church charisma. When we decided to come and start our church here, Bishop, together with the young people in the church, will go on retreat. He will carry these young people on a three days retreat, seven days retreat and pray with them, teach them the word of God, help them to understand the things of God and allow them to occupy various positions. My name is Stanford Azila Seden. I encountered my transformational leader, Bishop Gideon Titi Affair in 2004, when I came to Pleasant Place Church as a youth. Lost, rejected, all hope lost. In 2004, when I encountered Bishop, he drew me closer to himself, brought me to stay with him in his house, and trained me as a young man and transformed my life. Then I became a youth pastor. From a youth pastor, I became a branch pastor, which was my first mission church in OEB. From there to his transformational leadership, I was sent to Lagos, for another mission work. Bishop Titi Ofe has transformed me, changed my life as a pastor and as a husband, and now as a resident pastor of Pleasant Place Church, a showman. Through his leadership skills, I've been able to raise a church, also manage to transform people through what I've learned and studied from him. I was just a terrible and stubborn child growing up. Uh, determined to be notorious, a young boy filled with anger, rage and bitterness because my mother and father had separated at, at a very early age and so I blamed everybody, I mean, for, for, for not being there for me and uh, my auntie, Mrs. Kanye, forced me to attend church. That was when my path crossed with Bishop 17 years ago. I remember sitting in his office and he allowed me to talk, 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 talk. And I was pouring out my bitterness and angerness and he, he made this statement that I, I, I would always remember and I can never forget. And he said that, uh, uh, you see, Kobe, the day your umbilical cord was cut, that was when you were separated to the world and no one owed you nothing. That was my liberation and that was what defined my life. So it was as if some scale fell off my eyes and I felt liberated. And that encounter with you, Bishop, liberated and defined my life. So your passion in delivering the word made the Bible come alive to me and your teachings molded my thoughts, my heart, and my life as a whole. Your recognition of potentials helped me discover my purpose and my vision and has helped me grow in the things of God and in my spiritual life. Now today I'm a pastor and when I look at what God is doing with me and other people are celebrating me and, and I'm grateful for you because you saw in me what nobody else could see. Bishop, you've been intentional and deliberate to mentor and create platforms for us and we're grateful to God for you, the gift, and to the giver of the gift. So today we join as a church, family, and all of God's people everywhere to cheer and celebrate you, uh, to continue to inspire, love, impact, and influence your generation. Our church is basically a church of young people because my message attracts young people who are built future leaders. And 
If you come to the Pleasant Place Church, there are testimonies of, of young people uh, and getting into church with no vision, no direction for their lives. And yet today, they, can, they, they, they have purpose, they have direction. They are successful entrepreneurs, successful corporate leaders, successful family leaders, which is one of the areas that I'm very passionate um, about. When it comes to pastors, in 2010, Bishop held the first pastoral conference that was called Momentum. He put together about 2,000 young pastors and brought all the fathers, the charismatic fathers, together to come and teach them. All he was doing was to make sure that these pastors would discover their God-given potential so that they can bring about the change in our generation. No wonder today he's the convener and the host of International Pastors and Leaders and the 40 Summit, I+. Plus. My name is Steve Mensah. I'm the General Overseer of Charismatic Evangelistic Ministry. And all your life, as much as I've known you, you have been a man who is very, very passionate about building leaders and your programs, your activities, and everything. That was what, in fact, drew me to you, for which you became a partner to my team, crashed the rural world, and I've carried you across the regions of Ghana, just teaching on leadership and building leaders across uh, the regions and across the nation because of that passion. And uh, many, many, many have benefited from your teachings. Many people have benefited from your books. You've given free books to many pastors, thousands and thousands of pastors who you have ministered to across the country. He is for the leaders and he teaches, preaches and builds them. Has a lot of PowerPoints, a lot of, lot of images, and he does so, so, so well. Keep building the leaders because they are the future of our generation. When we are gone, they will take over and do the ministry to our level. Precious one, I'm Archbishop Charles Ajinasari. I have known Bishop Titi Ofe, the presiding bishop of Pleasant Place Chapel, and also the Accra Business School for so many years now. And I thank God for his life and what God is using him to do. A leader is somebody who is making a journey and has other people following him. Bishop Titi Ofe is one of such people. He has so many people following him from various strata of life and society. There are some leaders who walk the leadership walk, but they can't impart what they have to others. Well, Bishop Titi Ofe is one of such people who not only walks the leadership walk, but is able to impart the knowledge of leadership. He is able to translate leadership into information and information into knowledge, and he is able to share it. He is one person that has raised a lot of leaders in this nation and in this generation with his Accra Business School. And even before Accra Business School started, he had the Graduate School of Leadership. And even before then, he had been holding a lot of leadership seminars because there is something in him that wants to make other people rise up and become what God has made them to be. Job Titiofe, only heaven can tell how many people you have impacted and how many people's heads you have lifted up to be the God kind of leader God has called them to be. My name is Reverend Nana Enyane Buedum. I'm the General Overseer of the Jesus Generation Ministries, an executive member of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, and a member of the Apostolic Fellowship, where I sit in council with Bishop Titi Ofe. I have known the revered bishop many years back when he was a young man. Bishop Titi Ofe, I have observed that he is someone who is able to think on his feet and come up with astute responses 
in unanticipated situations. He brings astute responses into unanticipated situations. Engaging Bishop Titi Ofe, he always come across as confident, a person with diversified knowledge, persuasive, and above all, trustworthy. Bishop Titi Ofe is a dreamer. A dreamer who translates his dreams into reality. I'm grateful to God for the life of Bishop Gideon Titi Ofe. I got to know Bishop Gideon Titi Ofe through our Father in the Lord, Bishop Nijon Gashon. That is how come I got to know Bishop Titi Ofe. I've known him, but closely through Bishop Nijon Gashon. And when I saw him, I realized he carries a lot of grace and a lot of potential. But I want to let him know that he carries a certain special grace. And that special grace, I have seen many people not being able to combine it together. When you read Revelation chapter 5, verse 10, it says, we have been redeemed to become kings and priests. The dimension of priest is what many, many men of God we have been able to do. But when it comes to the dimension of kinship, kings, many men of God lack it. And when I talk about priesthood, priest has to deal with relationship with God, relationship with the spirit world. So many men of God, we have a relationship with the spirit world, we have a good relationship with God. But it, when it comes to relating to this world, when it comes to relating with the kingdoms of this world, many of us lack it. And that is where that grace upon Bishop Gideon Titi Ofer comes in. Because when we talk about kings, we are talking about a person like Solomon, who the queen of Sheba had to travel all along to come and look at what God had used for her to do. The excellence, the orderliness, and the way her table was set made the heart of the queen of Sheba to melt. That is how I can summarize this great grace and gift in Bishop Titi Ofer. He's a man of excellence, he's a man of order. He's been able to blend the academic and the spiritual is being able to blend church work and academic excellence. I always wonder how he does it. It's able to blend, if you like, call it politics, and the ability to relate to people from the spiritual dimension. So he has a great mix up. And so I want to encourage him. You have touched the lives of many young people. I, the ministry, uh, of uh, ministry to pastors under 40 years, uh, the youth of this nation, your university, uh, the Accra Business School has become a name, a household name. And many people from my church and around the uh, globe come to sit at your feet to receive of the grace of God that is upon you. If there is anybody who has mastery over the subject of leadership and how leadership can transform the lives of people who live in the third world. It is your leadership skills and teaching. And I bless God for you. I remember when you come to Royal House Chapel, uh, our youth conferences to come and speak to us and to challenge and to motivate those young people. Those words are building development and building future uh, destinies in the lives of these young people. Thank you. Thanks to Bishop Gideon Titi Affair, Ghana is a country filled with leaders making a difference in their communities and beyond. Listenary 2023, live on Facebook at Bishop Gideon T.T. Fair every Thursday at 1900 GMT.